There are a lot of incredibly popular games that I've never played. It might be because they were released before I was born, it might be because I just never had the system to play them, or it might be because for some reason I loathe the very concept of popularity and refuse to play them out of spite. Whatever the reason may be, I just tend to avoid games that are very popular. Donkey Kong Country is one such game. But as time goes on, and as those popular games fade into memory, I always find myself thinking, God damn it, I should have played that game. I always resist for years and years until I eventually cave and try it out. It's almost like I'm procrastinating, but I'm just not aware of it. I'll always hear great things about popular games, and no matter how much I don't care initially, I always end up playing it later down the line. Donkey Kong Country is one such game. Most of the time, when I eventually play these popular games, I usually don't know what I'm in for. I might have a very, very basic idea of what the game is sort of like, but most often I have no idea and I go into it completely blind. Donkey Kong Country is not one such game. I had never played Donkey Kong Country. I know it's very well loved by the people who have played it, but I had never played or seen anything of it myself. But I have played Donkey Kong Country Returns, which I understand to be a pretty faithful continuation of the older Donkey Kong Country games. It's also one of my favourite games on the Wii, so why did I not go back to play Donkey Kong Country? It was probably the spite thing, I'll be honest. Donkey Kong Country Returns is an amazing game, but is Donkey Kong Country an amazing game? Honestly? I don't know. I played through all of Donkey Kong Country, I'm very familiar with its good side, bad side and ugly side, but I genuinely cannot decide what I think of it as a whole package. So rather than spend an entire video telling you what I think about Donkey Kong Country, I'm instead going to spend an entire video figuring it out, because I seriously just don't know what I think. This game has me stumped, so the theory is that if I just start talking about it, Hopefully my true thoughts will just reveal themselves. So let's not waste any more time and get cracking. Donkey Kong Country is a 2D side-scrolling platformer. Oh come on, do I really need to explain what that is? You know the kind, it's running and jumping from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. Just like a classic Mario or Sonic game, but it's Donkey Kong. You probably could have figured that out by looking at it. Although to be honest, the first thing you'll notice by looking at it is that Donkey Kong Country looks pretty damn good. Especially for its time, I mean, this game came out in 1994. People were still using dial-up internet in 1994. I was actually kind of stunned. I was honestly expecting the game to be hideous, but it's not. There's also so much variety in the environments, you've got jungles, caves, temples, factories, oceans, and they all look great. The game is... beautiful. It's as if Vincent van Gogh descended from the heavens to create a completely accurate painting of the world as God intended it. Okay, slight exaggeration, but it does look pretty damn good. It also didn't take long for the game's music to win me over either. From the very beginning all the way to the very end, the soundtrack was incredible. Every song was either upbeat and catchy, or atmospheric and calming. There were so many memorable melodies, some of which I even recognised from Donkey Kong Country Returns. I don't really know what else to say about it, they just kind of nailed the soundtrack. It's as if Ludwig von Beethoven descended from the heavens to create a completely accurate musical score of the world as God intended it. There was never a point where I wished the music would stop playing. It's kind of hard to believe that a game this old could look and sound so wonderful. I guess it just goes to show that age isn't everything, and that even the most ancient of gaming relics can still impress to this day. Now I could spend forever frothing at the mouth and talking about how well Donkey Kong Country is presented, but let's not forget that this is a video game. The most important thing is the gameplay. It's all well and good being pretty and nice to listen to, but if the game plays like shit, the game is shit. And is the game shit? Well, let's find out. My first impressions playing the game were really strong. Like I said, I played Donkey Kong Country Returns before this game, so I knew roughly what to expect. I was initially impressed. For some reason, a lot of older platformers end up being really slow, janky, or a combination of the two. I really don't know why that is. It's not a problem all of them have, the popular ones are usually fine, but the rest are usually pretty awful. 
Donkey Kong Country doesn't have this issue, it plays really well. The whole idea of running to the right and jumping over pits is not a complicated one, but sometimes older games fuck up even the simplest of concepts, so it was such a relief to see that Donkey Kong Country had its core gameplay sorted. This is a game that's got its shit together. What I noticed pretty much straight away is that the levels have really good structure. Some platformers are very stop-start in the sense that their levels don't flow very well, and getting through them is a slog, like a 9 hour shift at work, or like spending Christmas with your family. Other platformers flow so much that you can just hold right and storm unimpeded to the very end. Donkey Kong Country hits a sweet spot where the levels flow really well, but not so well that the game can play itself. I guess what I'm trying to say is that playing through the levels is a smooth experience, and I mostly like the way they're built. That includes the way they're built around Donkey and Diddy Kong's movesets. They're built perfectly with their abilities in mind. Oh, yeah, you switch between Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong. This is not something I've ever seen before in a game. I don't know what this system is actually called, so I'm just going to call it the Meat Shield system. By default, you play as Donkey Kong, and throughout each level you can pick up and destroy DK barrels which allow Diddy Kong to tag along. This essentially functions as an extra hit point, and what happens is, if Donkey Kong takes damage, he'll run off and Diddy will take over and you start playing as Diddy. If you pick up and destroy a DK barrel as Diddy, Donkey Kong pops out of it and tags along, and if Diddy takes damage, he'll run off and Donkey Kong will take over. That's what I mean by Meat Shield. The backup character is using the character you're playing as as a Meat Shield. I like this, it's a unique take on a hit point system. What I also like is that DK and Diddy play ever so slightly differently. From what I could tell, Diddy was slightly faster and could jump slightly higher than DK, but DK was more of a powerhouse that had an easier time defeating enemies than Diddy. If I'm honest, the difference between the two characters is damn near negligible, but it does give the illusion of shaking up the gameplay at least. It gives the feeling of a more dynamic experience, even if nothing has really changed at all. Many platformers also have gimmick levels, and Donkey Kong Country is no exception, but it is a unique specimen in the fact that it actually does gimmick levels well. A bad gimmick level is a level where the gimmick is not an extension of the main gameplay, but rather an override of the main gameplay, to the point where it feels like you're playing a completely different game. Bad gimmicks feel like they don't belong, and often just end up being confusing. It's like if there was a new Batman movie, and at the very finale where he's about to face off against the Joker, rather than fight, Joker says, I've seen you fight, now let me see you dance. And Batman looks at Joker and says, you don't stand a chance against these hips. And they do the most glamorous salsa dance you've ever seen, and then they kiss at the end. It's unexpected, confusing, out of place, it was a little bit of fun, but it's not really why you're here. A good gimmick level doesn't replace the core gameplay with something completely different. Instead, a good gimmick level will add an extra twist to the core gameplay without taking away from it. The one that stands out in my mind the most is Blackout Basement, which is just a regular level like any other, except that periodically, the lights shut off for a brief moment and you can't see anything. That's it, that's the only difference, but it adds a fun, refreshing spin on what would have otherwise been just a normal level. Good gimmicks add to the gameplay, not take away from it. Donkey Kong Country does gimmicks right, I mean, there are some I can do without, I don't really see what the point of riding random animals is, they don't seem to add all that much, but they don't make the game worse, so I can give it a pass. The minecart levels were also fun, if a bit intense. What I also found impressive is that this game does water levels well. Water levels in platformers often suck shit, but the ones in this game actually aren't bad. But yeah, in terms of core gameplay and all the different levels, Donkey Kong Country is really, really solid. But the more I played the game, the more I noticed some of the issues it has. It's not as perfect as it seemed initially, and here's why. Donkey Kong's and Diddy Kong's controls are for the most part perfectly fine, but there is a hint of slipperiness. I don't know if it's to do with their momentum, or if the platforms are smaller than they look. I don't know what it is, but it would happen so often, where Donkey Kong or Diddy Kong would just slip off the edge, even though it never looked like they would. You think they're just going to stop at the edge of the platform, but they just keep going and plummet into the abyss. It's so frustrating and leads to so many unnecessary deaths. And speaking of unnecessary deaths, Donkey Kong Country relies a lot on cheap shots, and I hate that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, cheap shots in a platformer is where the game springs sudden, 
unexpected and unanticipatable danger upon you with absolutely no possibility of the player being able to react to or avoid it. Donkey Kong Country does that a lot. There are so many times where enemies just suddenly drop from the ceiling and kill you, or just jump in from off screen and kill you. It's brutally unfair. Like, it's not telegraphed. There's no tell that's gonna let you know that something will happen. It just happens and you die and the game's like, tough luck mate. This leads to a lot of game overs, which brings me on to some of the ways this game is outdated, mainly to do with the save system and game over system. The only way to save your progress is to use Candy Kong's save point, which becomes available to use towards the end of each world. You can't save whenever you want, you have to use that save point. If you get a game over, you go back to the last time you saved, which means you'll need to replay a few levels to get back to where you were. And with how many cheap shots this game throws at you, it's very likely that you'll be getting game overs. So you'll have to replay those levels over and over again. It's a miracle that any children were able to play this game. This is probably a good time to mention that I played Donkey Kong Country using the Nintendo Switch Online SNES Virtual Console Emulator Legacy Game Library Service, or whatever the hell it's called, meaning I did have access to save states. I did use them in the interest of saving time replaying levels over and over, but I only created save states at the beginning of levels or at checkpoints, so I still somewhat played the game the way it was intended. But still, even just knowing how brutal the punishment would have been had I not used save states filled me with rage. I hate that. Also, the boss fights suck. They're boring, they recycle the fights, they're not really interesting at all. The only good one is the final boss against King K. Rool, but even that isn't anything special. Just wanted to get that in. So in terms of gameplay, most of the experience is positive. It's fun, action-packed and diverse, but that positive experience is tainted by the slipperiness of the playable characters, the cheap shots and the outdated save system. Fuck all of that shit. Finally, I want to talk about the plot. Where is it? Where is the plot? From what I could gather, King K. Rool has stolen Donkey Kong's bananas. Is that it? Is there more to it than that? There aren't really any cutscenes or anything to explain what's going on, you just jump into the game and get going. It's just nothing. It's not an important part of the game, I know, but it would be nice to have a half-decent reason to be going through all these levels. Is it really all about bananas? I mean, they're not in short supply, they're fucking everywhere. You can't go three seconds in the game without picking up a banana. Give me a story to work with, please! Okay, those are all the things I have to talk about. About 2,487 words ago, I didn't know what I thought about this game. But now that I've talked about all the things I enjoyed, the things that I was bothered by, the things I loved, the things I hated, and the things I was just plain indifferent about, I've finally made up my mind. Donkey Kong Country is pretty good, but it's not as good as it could be. The gameplay for the most part is very fun and smooth, with the occasional well-executed gimmick to keep things interesting. The visuals and music are also breathtakingly brilliant and diverse, to the point where I would happily spend hours simply beholding it. Because of this, Donkey Kong Country had the potential to be a damn near perfect game, but it is held back by multiple things. The slipperiness of the controls, or the deceptively small platforms, I'm still not sure which one it is, as well as the cheap shots and the outdated save system, really drag the experience down, and it's not helped by the generally mediocre boss fights and lack of a decent story. So in short, Donkey Kong Country is pretty good. It had the potential to be excellent, but because of its shortcomings, it doesn't quite reach that level of excellence it could have reached. I know that seems like a pretty flat and underwhelming conclusion. See ya!